Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video tutorial talking about Autodesk Robot. It's been a long time since I have done one of those and uh, because I was like recently busy with the modeling analysis and design of reinforced complete building structures series which I will be linking on the top right but I thought hey there was some question that kept being repeated about the difference between walls and floors in the analysis and design part and I want to discuss that especially uh, the reasons why sometimes I use floors for modeling walls. So with that being said, and without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, so I'm going to open the design template and I'm going to show you, first of all, the analysis part of it. Now remember, this is a principle video, there's not many structures I'm going to be doing, it's just a principles video, so let's just make some principles. I'll apply that and close and go to view, so now you can see that I have, I put uh, coordinates in X05, Y05, and Z of course automatic. Now you can see that I have like little this little room, and now we're going to check out uh, the difference between modeling a vertical wall using a wall and modeling a vertical wall using a floor. Now if I click on wall, I can just model it. I'm gonna select me a thickness. I'm gonna make it 200. I'm just, I don't care about the reduction of moment of inertia and so on. Those are things I have used in other series today. It's just a principle series. So I'll add and close. There we go. I'm gonna draw the wall here. And also I'm going to use the floor. I'm going to use the same thickness. I'm going to unlock the horizontal slab and draw a rectangle. So I go to contour. I open the local axis because I want to make sure that my drawing is going to follow the same local axis. Um, there is a video series about slabs, so check that out to understand the importance of local axis. I will be linking the series in the top right. Okay, now uh, I'm going to add me some fixed supports because of stability issues, so I'll fix both. And now I'll add me a load. So here I will add me a dead load case. We have dead load, which includes self weight. And in the dead load, I'm going to apply me a surface load. You could apply a linear load on the edge, but I'm going to apply a surface load. And the surface load is, I don't know, like negative 5 in the Z. This is like, now I know you should apply it on the edge, but I don't care now. This is a principle video. That's one load case. And I want to add another load case because I want to show the differences. So I go to load cases or types, and I'll add me a live load type. And here I will add me a load. In the, Z, in the X axis. So this is zero and this is five. So this is a pressure perpendicular to the, wait, what? So this is a pressure perpendicular to the surface. Great, I have two load cases. Now, please notice that I'm assuming that you know the basics of robot. If you don't, then there's a playlist that basically gives you the required knowledge up to that point. So if you want to understand what we've done, you model two walls. One time I modeled it with the wall command. One time I modeled it with the floor command and we added a dead load here, vertical down and the live load, which is horizontal. Let's run the analysis. Of course, it tells me a separate structure. That's fine, no problem. It tells me some error here. I think I know why. Uh, the error is due to my own definition. Yeah, this model is incorrect. You see, let me run the analysis again and show you what happens. If you run the analysis again, there is an error. The load has not been distributed correctly. The reason why I have this error, now you will not have this error, but the reason why I have this error is if you click here, you see me having changed the calculation model to DexLab, I want it to be a shell. This is something that you will see automatically done for you, for me, because I changed something here to explain something. I did not have it, now everything is fine. So now what do we have? We have a wall modeled using a wall and the calculation model is a shell, and the thickness is 200. And then we have a wall modeled using a floor with the calculation model of a shell. So the difference here, the only difference is that one of them was modeled using a floor command, and one of them was modeled using the wall command. So now, are there any differences in the analysis? Well, to see that, we're going to basically check out the results and see if there is a difference. If I click on maps MXX, for example, you can see an identical model diagram, nothing changed. The values are identical. If you don't believe me, you can open with description and you can see the exact same numbers. So modeling with a wall and modeling with a floor in the analysis part is a copy-paste. Why? 
because the analysis part uses the shell finite element model. So you can see that in dead load, you have the same moments. Of course, they are zero because there are no moments. And the live load, you have moments. You can even switch and change something and check out all the values. They are identical everywhere. Even the normal forces, if you say normal force YY, for example, you see a zero here maybe or something. But if you go to the vertical load, you can see that there is a normal force. And once again, the values are identical. So what I'm saying is from an analysis and moments and stress point of view, modeling a wall using the wall command and modeling a wall using the floor command is going to be identical because in both cases, your calculation model should be a shell. For the floor, it should be a shell. And for the wall, it is automatically a shell. So what I'm saying is that if you model a wall using the floor or a wall using a wall, you will get the same answers and the same results. But this is, this is not an answer to the question that you asked, why did you use the floor command to model walls? I have used the floor command to model walls, I think in two videos before. One of them was about the swimming pool and the other one is about the retaining wall in the current uh, structural uh, analysis series. And I will be linking the two videos on the top right. The reason why I use floors sometimes is because of the design model. The analysis model is the same, but let's look what happens if I take a wall and send it to the design module. So I'll go to design and then go to provided reinforcement and let's see how robot sees the wall. I will accept those things and you can see, okay, fine. This is a problem in my own robot design module. I have to reinstall it, but look how robot sees the wall. It sees the wall as a shear wall and it even applies to boundary elements. Now, technically speaking, a shear wall has an assumption as follows. Now, if we have this wall, and pardon my bad drawing, if we have this wall, the shear wall is designed to resist the following forces. A in-plane shear, an axial load, and a moment that rotates around this axis. Those are the forces that are used to design a shear wall. What about the other moments and forces? The shear wall is oblivious to those. Those don't get uh, accounted in the design of a shear wall. However, if you have a floor like this, then what are the forces that are designed? The forces in the floor are actually assumed to be perpendicular to the floor, causing a moment around X and a moment around Y. And uh, those moments will cause, of course, reinforcement. Now, this is a floor and this is a wall. And if you define a if you define a wall using the wall command, then you are assuming that this is your major loads that you will design for. And if you define a wall using a floor command, then you assume that those are your major loads that you're going to design for. This, this immediately raises the question, first of all, how do you prove that robot only sees this? And second of all, okay, why do you use floor for walls? You see, I used floor for walls in two occasions, in a swimming pool and a retaining wall. I had a wall there, and I used the floor command to model the wall. The reason behind this is because for the swimming pool and for the retaining wall, the, the major or principal loads are going to be perpendicular to the surface, meaning that it's, not, it's, going, to, it's going to behave in design as if it is a floor, not as if it is a shear wall. So that's the reason why I modeled the swimming pool wall and the retain wall using the floor command. I use this always when I have a planar surface that is principally loaded perpendicular to its surface. So that's the reason. Now I want to prove to you for the first question, how do I prove that? Well, I go to robot and this is the wall that I imported. Look at the inputs when I go to the loads. If you go to the load definition, look at the inputs. Uh, like I clicked here. If you go to load definition, look, those are the loads that the shear wall sees. It sees a normal force, which is the compression force. It sees a horizontal force and it sees a moment. Okay, and the problem is that, yeah, this is not exactly what happens in a swimming pool. This happens in a shear wall 
and it does not happen in a swimming pool wall or a retaining wall. So that's the reason why, like, and if you see, when I basically have imported the wall into the design module, it assumed it to be a shear wall. Now, if you import the floor into the design module and you go here, then it assumes it to be a floor with top and bottom reinforcement. Okay, I have a problem, of course, on my robot. If you go to the... Right, what am I doing here? I think there is a problem with my robot. There we go. Yeah, there we go. You see, when I imported the wall this way, then it understood it to be a floor, basically. And you can see the reinforcement changing based on what is required. I think this isn't X, so I need to go to the Y because the X is kind of uh, secondary reinforcement. But I don't, I don't care now, that's not my point. My point is, I mean, if you go to the Y, you can see the cantilever reinforcement. There we go. Yeah, if you go to the Y, you see the typical cantilever reinforcement. Those are the required reinforcements, not necessarily the provided reinforcement. What I'm saying is that now, because you have used the floor auto model, the wall, it now assumes it to be a structural unit that is loaded perpendicular to its surface with MX and MY being the major parts. So that's the reason why sometimes I model walls using the wall command and sometimes I model walls using the floor command. Structural analysis speaking, no difference. The difference, the difference you will see is when you take those things and throw them to the design module. If you have a wall, it's gonna be designed as a shear wall with its principal forces. And if you have a floor, it's gonna be designed as a slab. And in the shear wall, the assumption of loads is this one. And in the slab, the assumption of loads is this one. So basically pick and choose what you think is best. In my opinion, I use shear walls for shear walls and for retaining walls and swimming pools. Those walls have uh, major loads perpendicular to the surface like this. In that case, I would model this to be a floor. So yeah. That's kind of a short video, I know, but I needed to get this out of the way because I got asked this question multiple times. And it's also a long time since I made a principal video. So there you go. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And of course, before I finish, I want to give a retaining wall sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as their support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve, and for that, I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and it was beneficial. If it was beneficial, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, and so on. Especially subscribing, because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.